So in this talk, we are going to do some exercises involving inverses. Okay, so we are sort of going to work with magmas and monads, though ultimately it's going to give some interesting things about groups. Okay, so the first one which I want you to consider is this. Suppose you have a magma. So magma just means you have a set and a binary operation on the set. Okay. And you have a neutral element, that means it's an, there's an identity element for your magma. And every element has a unique left inverse and a unique right inverse. Okay? So the unique left inverse and unique right inverse. But they need not be equal. Then the left and right inverse maps, which are maps from the set to itself, are inverse maps of each other. So what do I mean by that? So let's just give some names to our things. What's the name for your set? Give some name, no? Uh, S. S. And the binary operation, star. And what's the identity element? E. E. Identity elements are also called neutral elements. Okay. Now, every element has a left inverse, which is unique, and a right inverse is unique. So, for... So, what does that mean? For all A and S, there exists unique, so this symbol means there exists unique B and S such that what? B star A is E. And similarly for all A and S, there exists unique C and S such that what? Hmm? A, C, A star C. Now, since we don't know that the operation is associative, we cannot conclude that B equals C, right? If the operation were associated, we would know that the left and right inverse are the same. But we are not asked to show that. We are being asked to show that the left and right inverse maps are two-sided inverses of each other. So what does that mean? So what's the left inverse map? Call that L. S to S. What does it do? What is L of A? Define that. Hmm? The left inverse. So, what's it giving? It's just giving this B, right? What's R of A giving? Hmm? C. It's the unique C such that that, right? So, R and L are both maps from S to L. Okay, now what, I'm, what am I asking you to show? Well, I'm asking you to show that L and R, when they're viewed as maps from S to S, they are inverse maps of each other. Okay, so what do I mean by that? Hmm? What does it mean to say two, two maps are inverses of each other? Which are set maps, yeah? Hmm? Take and do each other. Yeah, so when you compose them, you should get? Yeah, that's also called the identity map, right? Mm -hmm. So what we want to show that L composed R is the identity map. So this is what we want to show. And what are the other thing we want to show? We want to show that it versus both. Ways. What's the other thing we want to show? Is the identity map on S. Okay, that's the same as saying. This is the same as saying L of R of A is A for all. A. And this is saying R of L of A is A for all A. Okay, now why are these two statements true? If I take an A and I first pick a right inverse for A, that means I'm picking a C such that A times C is E. Okay? Now I want to pick a left inverse for C. So that means I have to find some new element which when you multiply by C you get E. But we remember, but we see that A itself is a left inverse for its right inverse, right? Mm -hmm. And because of uniqueness, it, it's the unique left inverse. Okay, so do you see why this is true? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, can you explain the other one? Well, we first find out the left, unique left inverse of A. Yeah, let's call that B. Now we mm -hmm. want to find what? Unique right inverse of B, which yeah. is A. But we already know that A is a right inverse of B. And mm -hmm. since we have assumed that every element has a unique right inverse, A is the right inverse of B. Mm -hmm. So R of L of A is, is actually A. Okay, good. 
So these two maps are in are two sided inverses of each other. Now, when I say two sided inverses here, I mean it in a different sense. I mean it inverses as maps. Okay, so there's there's two different uses of the word inverse here. Okay. One is inverses in the magma which you have, and the other is is as inverses as maps. Okay, now the next one. We try the next one. So in, you have a monoid. You get some names. You call, want to call your monoid. M. M for monoid. Okay. And the binary operation we call star. The identity element we call E. Okay. Now I want you to show that the set of elements that have left inverses. So ignore the respect to part for now. Uh, the set of elements that have left inverses is a sub monoid. Of n, and it has the same identity element. So what do I what what am I saying? So let me give it some name. I give the give a name to the set of elements which have left inverses. So what is it as a set? It's the elements a and m such that hmm? there exist. Yeah, not necessarily any. You cannot assume any unique. There exists a b and m such that. B A equals to B star A equals to B. Okay, good. So that's our set L. It's a subset of M. The claim is it's a sub monoid. What do I mean by that? Well, I I'm basically saying it's closed under the multiplication of M and it contains the identity element of M. So yeah, I don't have to check associativity again. Oh, by the monoid, just to remind people, monoid means it's a magma where so the set with a binary operation, it's associative and has an identity element. Okay, so we want to show what do we want to show? We want to show two things, right? The first is that uh, a comma b in L implies we want to show it's closed under the operation, right? So what do we want to show? Star b is in L. Okay, and the other thing we want to show is same identity element. So we want to show that b is in L. Okay, let's begin with the first thing. So now you tell. So a comma b and l. So what does that mean? They both have two left inverses. Give names to the left inverses. A prime, b prime. Now we are not assuming uniqueness of left inverses. So there could be many different left inverses for a. We're just picking one for each. Okay, good. Now you want to find the left inverse for A star B. What do you think should be the left inverse for A star B? A star B. Yeah, we want to we want to show that A star B is an L, right? Uh, so we want to find the left inverse for B prime star A prime. Mm -hmm. So this is sort of this is sort of a slight variant on the on the inverse map is involutive business for groups, right? We're just doing it in a slightly more general. Is a left inverse for A star B. We're really just going over all the proofs needed for groups and trying to do them in slightly more general setting. So what do we get? So let's show this. Let's prove this mini claim here. So how do you prove it? Well, you just multiply. What is that? You can reparenthesize. So how do you parenthesize it? A prime A. B prime. Then you put A prime A together. You want. This A prime A becomes e. e. And so B prime star E star B, which is B prime star B, which is hmm? e. E. So that proves that B prime star A prime is a left inverse for A star B. So we've shown this one. Now what about showing that the identity element of M, that's E, is actually in L. So how, how, what you need to show to show that the identity element E is actually in L, you need to find the what for E. So L is the set of things which have what? Left inverses. So in order to show that E is in L, you have to exhibit a left inverse for E. Can you think of a left inverse for E? Okay, so this just is just data 
e is a lacking words for me. I'm not writing it separately, but you should if you're presenting it for me. Okay. So we've shown that in a monoid, the set of elements that have left in verses is a submonoid. Okay, how would you show that the set of elements that have right in verses is a submonoid? The same. The same. The inverse you'll pick is the same. What will change in your proof? What part of the proof will change? Which part will change? Well, you'll change left to right though, right? You'll make each of the lefts right and this will become whatever. But 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 how will this change? What product will you consider? You'll still take B prime star A prime as the right in words. But you'll 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 try to show instead of this, you'll be trying to show that instead of this, you'll be trying to show that A star B star B prime star A prime is the identity. Right? You'll start with this product. Okay, and the rest you'll then group them together, etc. Okay, now the next one you can do completely by yourself. The in in a monoid, the set of elements that have both left and right inverses is a subgroup with the same identity element. Yes. So can you do this? Yeah. You will dictate it to me. Do we have to? Sorry? Oh, we just combine all the data for that one, right? Okay. So. Okay. So, so let's look at the left one. Then. So the left one, what did it show? It showed that, that it's close, that the set of things which have left inverse is close under multiplication. The right one showed the thing which have right inverse is close under multiplication. Now what we are doing here is you are taking the intersection. We are really taking the intersection of the things which have left inverses and the things which have right inverses. Right? When you take an intersection, it's still going to be closed under multiplication. Right? Because each of them individually is closed under multiplication. It's still going to contain the identity element because each of these individually is contains the identity element. But the hard part is showing it actually is closed under inverses. Or not hard, but that's the one we haven't yet done. So, how would you establish that it's actually closed under taking inverses? That is, there, there is a well-defined inverse operation in here. Well, okay, here's what you know. So, so these are elements which are both left and right inverses. Now, can you actually say that the left and right inverses are equal? For any element, is the left inverse equal to the right inverse if they both exist? No. Well, not in general, but in a monoid, they are. Right? Why? Why? Because. Because of associativity. Mm -hmm. Right? The proof, we prove that if you have associativity, then left inverses and right inverses have to be equal. Yeah. So, therefore, in a monoid, the elements which have left inverses and right inverses actually have two sided inverses. Mm -hmm. Now, would the two sided inverse itself be in the thing which has left and right inverses? Yeah. Why? So if A has a two-sided inverse, right. Okay. So what we really care about showing is that elements which have left and right inverses to our flow, like the inverse of such an element. So first of all, in left and right invertible, or left and right inverses like this. Implies that they are equal and two-sided inverses like this. Right? Because it's a monoid. But now is the two-sided inverse itself in the things which have two-sided inverses? Not sure. Well, just think the inverse, the two-sided inverse. If 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 A has a left inverse B, then B has a right inverse A, right? Mm -hmm. So if A has a two-sided inverse B, then B has a two-sided inverse A. Okay. So, and this implies that the two-sided inverse is also in the things which have.
danger. Okay. Yeah. So, which means that the elements in both left and right inverses, it's a submonoid, it contains the identity element and it's closed and taking inverses. And so that means it's actually a subgroup. Okay. Uh, the last one's a little tricky, so we'll do it in a separate. 